Hi everyone, this is a re-upload of the video Find Your First Bug RCE, which was a clickbait. Um, this is the real title, it's goal setting and motivation. Uh, I hope you enjoy this episode and you find it useful and perhaps less clickbaity. Alright, enjoy! What is this video actually about? Um, so I'm sorry for the bait and switch, I really am clickbait, I don't really like doing it. But I posted this as a joke on Twitter and a lot of people said they couldn't wait for the bug, uh, bug the video uh, on the RCE bugs. And I don't know how to tell people that it was a joke. Um, so I made this video and instead of talk about doing a full-on parody of myself, which just sounds really cringy, uh, I'm instead going to talk about goals, motivation and learning. Um, and talk about how to set realistic goals, how to learn and how to keep yourself motivated for finding bugs. Because believe it or not, Getting an RCE is not enough motivation to keep you hacking when you're a beginner. Sorry. Um, so why won't you get an RCE as a beginner? Uh, so RCEs pay well because they are hard to find. They require a lot of security expertise. They require a lot of intuition. There's no way to pick up a book and learn intuition and learn, okay, that's got an RCE in it. It's a skill you develop over time. You can't magically learn how to get an RCE. There's no video, there's no course, there's no magic spell. It's something you learn. Unless you have a ridiculous amount of security experience, you will not find RCE as a beginner. Uh, and I, a lot of people are probably already aware of the Dunning-Kruger effect, but this means the less you know, the more confident you feel that you know everything. But you don't. As a beginner, you probably can't find an RCE if you're a normal beginner, right? It's okay not to be able to, it's okay to have that as a motivation, but you can't find one and there's no video that's going to teach you a shortcut to find an RCE, it's incredibly difficult. And it's, it's okay to have goals, it's okay to say, my ambition is to find an RCE and get paid a ridiculous amount of money for it. Being ambitious is good but you've got to set goal setting. It's so important for your personal and professional development to be able to set goals because your motivation is directly linked to goals, right? When you complete a goal, you get an endorphin rush and it feels good and you want to continue. There's no point setting a goal that's so high that you will never meet it. You'll just burn out. You will, you're never going to find an RCE on your first attempt. So just change your goal, like change your mindset about how you how you think about go goals um and i want to introduce this book one of my favorite books um it's called drive the surprising truth about what motivates us and this directly links to our the, the goal of having an rce because it just pays well right that's why people want them because it pays really well and money can only act as a motivator for basic mechanical tasks to remove the concern of money out of the equation. Once you no longer have to work, don't have to worry about money, money isn't a motivator and it doesn't work for any cognitive demanding tasks. Getting an RCE because it pays well will not be enough for you to be motivated to continue hacking to a point where you can actually get an RCE. And instead you work for things like autonomy. I will do it in my way. Mastery, I will improve and get better. And purpose, I'm doing this to improve the world. And you know what? Bug bounties are really great at meeting those three things. Autonomy, you're very autonomous when you do bug bounties. You're sitting alone and focusing on um, your own uh, way of doing things. You're getting better. That's like getting an RCE is not about being paid lo lots of money. It's about improving your skills slowly to go from very simple bugs to really complex bugs. Um, and then purpose, which is I'm doing this to improve the world. I'm doing this to make things more secure. And I wanted to mention this because I think it's something that gets lost in what bug bounties actually are. And it's not about getting you rich because you it won't last as a motivator, right? Um, so your goals need to be realistic. If your goal is beginning to get an RCE, you won't reach it as a beginner. You just won't. Like, you don't have the skill set. And it's important to realise, hey, I don't have the skill set to do this. I need to do something else. I need to improve. I need to get better. And if that is your goal and you don't reach it, it's going to make you so frustrated. You get no endorphins and you will just give up. You won't have that motivation to be like, I can, like, I've got, like, a little bit further. You'll just be like, well, 
I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't get an RCU, so what's the point? And this is not because you're stupid or because you're not good enough. Like, there's nothing intrinsic about you that means that you can't find an RCU, you can't get those kinds of bugs. You just don't have that expertise yet. And what you need to do is you need to set goals so you can gain that expertise over time, not just expect to be able to find an RCE, not just watch one of my videos and go, ah uh, yes, I can. I want to get an RCE, can you make a video on how to get an RCE? It's not going to happen, there's no magic trick, there's no special course. So I want to talk about types of goals and kind of what your plan should look like, right? So we kind of have two axes here, we have the goal, so what would be an MVP will be the minimum viable product, will be the bare minimum that would make you happy and make you think, yeah, I've achieved that goal. Uh, nice to have. What could you push yourself to do? Like, what what would you look at and go, yeah, I'm really proud of what I've done. And exceeding expectations. What would be amazing? What would be you smashing it out of the park? And then we have the other access, which is short term. So easy to complete in a short amount of time. We have daily, weekly, monthly. These are smaller goals that are perhaps way more um, easy to manage in our head, right? Then we've got medium term. Um, we've got, like, they may require reviews, they may require smaller goals. You know, we have 5k in bounties, but actually we need to find 5k of bugs first. So when I, when I say kind of short term and long term, we're really looking at how easy it is for you to understand the 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 goal you have and finally we have long term so they take a long time you need to review your pros progress at each stage so we have you know our mvp for the short term might be to get a private invite or to find a bug you know to find something very simple our nice to have might be okay i want to find a business girl and an idol but if i don't find that i'll be fine i'll be really happy with what i've achieved and next we have kind of you know our bigger ones, you know, make 5k in bounties, do a write-up of an interesting bug, get invited to a live event. This is what I mean when I say your goals have to be, like, quite manageable. And I'm going to go in, in more detail about how to set goals and what kind of goals to set, but I think it's important to talk about the types of goals. And our find an RCE is not short-term, it's not anything, it's long-term, right? It's, it's, takes years to do we have to continually review our knowledge and what we want to learn the next one is to make a tool the community loves and be a featured speaker at an event so when we talk about goals you're like most people watching this video are here right find find a bug they're not gonna be down in find an rce that that's not a very good goal to have because you're not going to be able to meet it. Your short-term goal can't be find an RCE. It's just not going to work. So I'm going to talk about actioning goals and how to make goals that actually make you feel good. Um, so first off is SMART goals. You've probably already heard about these before. Uh, SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, relevant and time bound so when we make smart goals and you might have done this in school or at work we want to say specific so we want to say a good goal is i want to get an xss bug there is a clear end point which is when you get that bug and you submit it it is done it is you have achieved it when you want to say i want to learn about xss you kind of left it open right you can't m measure that specifically and go yes this is what i want to do they are clear, they are defined, they are precise. This is what I want to have. Um, and the reason why this is so important is that you can spend forever learning about XSS, right? You can spend months reading, writing, um, maybe playing with payloads, doing CTFs, but fundamentally learning about it, when does it end? When do you know you've completed it? Um, and then we've got measurable. So... A measurable goal is something you can actually measure. Uh, so I've used the example of making 5k in bounties. So you'll know when you achieve that because you'll have 
$4,999 and then you'll have $5,000. There is a very clear I am X percent through my goal. Um, so you can track as what you can like look at it and go, okay, so this month I haven't really achieved my goal. I need to work a bit harder or I didn't really find anything this month, but I'm pretty close. So I know that I can meet it. You know, I'm not going to meet that this year. I'm going to meet it next year. A bad goal would be, I want to start bug bounty hunting. Now it's fine to have that as kind of like a big picture goal, but that's not measurable. Like you can't measure how like how close you are to starting in bug bounty hunting not least because you're supposed to just start and you're not supposed to <clears throat> you're not supposed to um uh, uh, uh think about it for ages so the point of it measurable is that you should be able to track your progress and that will keep you really motivated because you'll see yourself make those tiny little increments of i better i'm a little bit better i'm a little bit better um and this is when we get to kind of the crux of this video, which is achievable. You need to have a goal you can actually accomplish. And you can't have a goal that's just, you'll never get there. You're just setting yourself up for failure. So a good goal is I want to find an eye door as my first bug. You know, I know that they're quite easy to find. I know that a lot of beginners find them. I can do that. A bad goal is I want to find an RCE as my first bug. You know, RCEs are not first bugs. They're, you're never going to achieve it. You're just setting yourself up for this unrealistic expectation that is going to make you really demotivated because you're not going to find an RCE as your first bug. And if that's your goal, then you're going to end up feeling like shit when you don't, <laughs> despite the fact that it wasn't something you could achieve anyway. And the next one is relevant. So relevant is more used in a kind of workplace setting um but i still think it's worth pointing out um a good goal i want to find my first bug a bad goal i want to learn to skateboard the relevance is why why is the goal important to you so finding your first bug is obviously important for developing as a bug bounty hunter right um so that's a kind of career driven one um and it's worth thinking about how the goal helps your future and where you want to go and having a kind of time plan in mind so okay i want to get into bug bounties because i want to get a pen testing job and i think it'll be good to add to my cv or i'm a student and i want to make some extra money because school is expensive etc etc um so it's worth thinking about relevant goals even if they're probably going to be relevant anyway which is going to be about you know bug what kind of bugs you want to find um and the final one is time bound now i think this is probably one of the most important things especially when we talk about long term medium term and short term goals is um when you want to actually achieve a goal by uh so you can work sort of towards a goal uh, so a good goal is this year I want to find one high bug and a bad goal is I want to find one high bug. Having that year in mind means that you can see your progress over the year. You can track how far you are or how far off you are from meeting your goals. Um, and especially when we consider bug bounties, a lot of people have yearly goals. Um, you'll see on Twitter, especially in the new year, people will say my year in bug bounties. I want to make 100k in bounties or I want to go to three live events, that kind of thing. So you will see people doing these time bound goals and actually something really interesting about goal setting is if you tell somebody else about your goal and they keep you accountable to it you're more likely to complete that goal because you feel bad <laughs> but the point i'm trying to make here is not that you should feel bad for not hitting a goal but instead that um they can help you to make goals and to see what other people's goals are um and there are people who have literally gone from knowing nothing about bug bounties to being at live events within a year. However, they are not the kind of people who said, I want to find RC as my first bug. They're the people who set realistic, achievable, measurable, relevant goals for themselves and then met them. Um, so next thing I want to talk about is action plans. So we have our goal. Uh, how do we know how far we are towards it? 
So an action plan, this is this is the grow model. So you have your goal, where you want to be. That is your that is that is your big that's your big thing from these ones, right? Um, your reality, where you are. So if your goal is in two years I want to find an RCE bug. Your reality is I've never hacked anything in my entire life. I haven't even got one bug yet. Your obstacles are I don't have the knowledge. And then you'll you want to think about okay, how can I overcome that? So if you're thinking about not having the knowledge, maybe it's taking courses, maybe it's um, finding more bugs, maybe it's collaborating with others, maybe it's learning more about CVEs to try and use that as the exploitation. Uh, and then your way forward, and which is clear steps to take to meet your goal. Um, so instead of taking our big RCE goal, let's look at a smaller goal. So to find my first bug and be rewarded with the bounty, that's our goal. Our reality is that I'm a web developer, I don't have any security experience, but I know quite a lot about web development. So our obstacles are, I don't know much about security. Our overcoming is that we can actually leverage the knowledge of web dev to learn more about security because we already have that knowledge of kind of security from the other side. We may not be kind of red teaming, but we know other stuff, right? And we can we can use that. Um, and the way forward is maybe you say, read a book to learn about the basics. Maybe you then go, okay, OWASP top 10 bugs. That might be a good place to start. And then try out CTS to learn more. And then it's to reach your goal, right? We have this clear plan of our problems, our reality, our way forward. Um, and having these kind of action plans and being able to go, this is where I want to be. And this is how I'm going to get there are so important to kind of keeping that motivation within and going because it's so easy to lose your motivation when you set goals you can't reach and when you set goals you should always be revisiting them you should always be going okay am i meeting them am i too far did i miscalculate you know it's an agile process of you set your goal you work towards it and then you look back and you say okay what worked what what did i achieve on which did i not achieve on and the more you do that the better you'll be at estimating how long a goal will take how difficult a goal will be how much you can actually reach those goals um so the most important part of goal setting is evaluating your performance and being honest with yourself and this is one of the most difficult things to do because people tend to fall into these two steps uh first is imposter syndrome where you feel like you know nothing you're a fraud my success was nothing but not luck um, and that's all about feeling like you're an idiot and the only reason you kind of get you like in this one will find bugs is because you got lucky right it, it was easy and you were just the person who did it who did it however in reality you know you feel like you know nothing and other people know everything else but really you know a lot and some people's like knowledge just happens to overlap with yours um and i work in academia um because i'm a phd student and this is so prevalent in academia that it's a huge problem um and then you have the other side so you have illusionary superiority or the dunning kruger or whatever you want to call it which is the complete opposite it's where someone who doesn't know everything thinks they do know everything you know <laughs> Uh, most people there was a study that was done on uh, professors in the department and so like 60 percent of people rated themselves as better than average and that's the kind of attitude like i'm better than average no one has the skills that i have i'm amazing and then you have the dunning kruger where your confidence goes up as you learn like as, as you just start you think you know everything and actually you don't um, and it's really important to try and be honest with yourself and trying to recognise whether you're suffering with imposter syndrome or illusionary superiority and go, what are my skills actually? Like, what do I actually know? What is what, what about this is my brain telling me I'm terrible or I'm amazing? And what is me actually being terrible or amazing? Uh, so I'm going to talk about some ways to combat this, but these are not methods these are things you should be looking into and things you should be practicing um so the first one is metacognition 
which is thinking about thinking. And it's a way of thinking about yourself and your knowledge. Um, and some of the important types are understanding your own capabilities, content knowledge, how difficult something is for you to do, task knowledge, and how you approach learning strategic knowledge. Now, these are so important when you look at bug bounties, right? Because what we what we do when we look at a target and we look, can I hack this, is we're, we're performing metacognition. We're trying to understand our own capabilities. We're trying to see how difficult a asset might be to hack. And we're trying to strategically think of ways to... Um, to approach that target right within our current level of understanding uh, and you do metacognition all the time right you will you will often think about thinking <laughs> and how you think um and metacognition has this cycle right where you assess a task you evaluate your strengths and weaknesses you plan your approach you apply the strategies to kind of eliminate uh, strengths and weaknesses and you reflect and the most important thing you can do to improve your metacognition is to reflect and don't just reflect on the good or the bad reflect on everything if you're somebody who's prone to imposter syndrome you should reflect and see okay what did i really perform did i perform better than other people or did i perform average uh, and illusionary superiority you're thinking okay how did i perform did i did i really meet the kind of um image i have of myself right so it's when we look at metacognition and we think about um how to improve it's all about self-reflection it's all about being honest with yourself um and not letting that kind of those those two um way like methods creep in too much um so what is introspection and self-reflection um, so introspection is examining your thought, thoughts and feelings and reflection is reflecting upon something you've already done. Um, so some questions you ask is what have you done? How well you did it? Can you improve it? Can Did something work? Did something not work? What you want to do next? How you're going to approach it? Do you need to make any changes? What changes do you need to make? So to take this onto maybe you find a bug, you might go, what have you done? well i found my first bug how well did you do it well it was kind of difficult but i think once i found something to hook into i felt that was a lot easier and i was able to do a lot better at it and if i was going to do it again i'd probably start with taking more notes or i'd start with looking through those endpoints sooner what do you want to do next um i think for my next bug i want to try a different class of bug to really understand um what other bugs are out there and so i can develop my knowledge do you need to make changes i think to make changes i might want to look more into idols i might want to look at some automation tools uh what changes do you need to make you know it's, that's the kind of thing we're thinking about and if you perform self-reflection often you'll find yourself more able to perform metacognition right you'll be thinking more about um how well you did it what you did and you'll start to be more honest with yourself as you sort of do this self-reflection and this is not just important in you know people do it for like coursework and stuff like that they'll make you do a self-reflection but it's so important for just developing you as a person to be able to look back and say okay yeah this is what i need to this this is what i need to learn so with that in mind what skills does a hacker need right um, so I've kind of split it into four. This is loosely based off of um, a, a researcher kind of um, method where um, like researchers in universities, not not uh, security researchers, um, and kind of splits into these, these four things. So the first one is your technical skills, right? That is your hacking techniques, your programming, your knowledge of tools like Burp, it's your recon, it's all of that technical stuff. That means you can successfully execute on a um, on a bug to be able to exploit it. Um, and then it's your communication skills. It's writing clear reports, understanding the full impact of a bug. It's un <clears throat> it's that mix of um, dealing with the customer or the, the the target. It's dealing with you know hacker one staff. It's dealing 
with other hackers and being that kind of good good reporter right they they people want to receive reports from you because they're really useful and this is kind of leads into community engagement so that's engaging with the greater bug bounty community a lot of the best bugs get, don't get found by individuals but instead get found by groups of people so it's really important to engage with the bug bounty community whether that's disclosing bugs getting to know fellow hackers whether or not that's on twitter or um looking at uh you know slack channels that kind of level and sharing tips um this is the stuff that gets you involved in the community and finding those better bugs and it's so important to becoming a good hacker to have people to rely on and people you can ask for tips you know it's it's going up to somebody and at a live event and saying hey i look can you show me one of the bugs you found right it's being a good member of the community and the final one is personal effectiveness that is all about your learning your self-improvement your goal setting part of being a professional uh, whether that's bug bounty whether that's a security professional whether that's any other kind of professional is being able to realize what you're bad at and become good at it it's it's the approach of learning it's the approach of goal setting it's everything we've talked about today and being able to correctly say okay this is where i'm at so what i would recommend you do if you've never done this kind of thing before um is to set some goals map the goals to this kind of technical communication community engagement personal effectiveness so you can understand yourself better so you can clearly reflect with these skills in mind um and i just want to make some final wor words on my videos and uh, what who they're for and why so i don't really like making clickbait i felt really bad making this video because i think that clickbait is kind of a uh not very fun and i'm gonna put rce in the thumbnail even though i know it's not about rce um but it seemed like people didn't realize that this video was like a random joke i made because i was making a ton of doing a ton of video preparation content at the time and it really was a joke of being like huh look your first bug can be an rce and i think it's quite well known in the hacker community that rces aren't first bugs but people asked me they they really did ask hey how like i'm looking forward to the rce video and so i made it but i didn't i didn't want to make an rce video because I don't think it's appropriate but i wanted to talk about goal setting because i think that the people who ask me aren't stupid they aren't like uninformed they're very very intelligent people they just don't know how to make set goals because technical technical level is only one part of the pie chart right there's a whole section on personal effectiveness on making and setting goals so my aim for this video was to kind of clickbait this whole thing and trick you into watching a video about professional development <laughs> because i think it is really important um and i want people to enjoy bug hunting but also feel like bug hunting is making they feel closer to their goals right and i think my takeaway from all of this is if you want to um if you want to, to, to hunt bugs, you should start thinking about what your goals are. You should be mar making your smart goals. You should be thinking about your action plans. I mean, when, we're at the new year now and it's a good time to turn a new leaf, apparently, despite the fact most people don't reach their goals in the new year. So if you want to take away from this, make some smart goals, do some action plans, start evaluating your performance, do self-reflection, right? Perform it and then work out where you fit on this little pie chart and figure out what are the skills you need to get better at hacking. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, even if you didn't really like the fact that I was clickbaiting. Um, and I hope you found it useful, even if it wasn't about RCEs. Um, so have a good new year, everybody. And if you've already celebrated your new year because you're in a country that doesn't celebrate it on January 1st, I hope you already had a good new year. And I hope this gives you a lot to think about and a lot of things to kind of mull over. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will see you in the next video.